Salutations wet shavers, Spencer back here again for the second part. Today, today, now we're going to be going on to the razors. We've also got Teacher's Highland Cream Single Malt Scotch. Very nice stuff. Mm. Just going to sit back, relax and sort of just chill out. I like just having these sort of like talk type things. Just seem a little bit more personal, that sort of stuff, as soon as you sort of sit down in a chair. Sort of just lay back and relax, hey? So I hope you guys have a drink there. We're gonna go into the razors. I don't know how many I have here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight, 16. I've got around like 30 or something. So yeah, quite a few. We're gonna start off with a nice basic one. Merca 34C, absolute killer razor. I know some people aren't huge on it, it's a, just a little two piece, but I love this razor. I think when you start coming into really heavy beard growth, it might struggle. That's what some people have said. I have dense growth, but it's not coarse, if that makes sense, because you know, I'm 20, hasn't had, <laughs> hasn't had a chance to get coarse yet. That's why I get bullied in this wet shaving community because I'm damn young. I need someone else to get bullied with me. You're all damn old farts. <laughs> uh, next up, we got a favourite looking of mine. It's my favourite, yeah, probably my favourite looking razor in the den. PAA Alpha Ecliptic. I bought this off Kenneth Lee very kindly. It's a vet, it was a very rare razor. Literally the day I got it shipped in, the new batch had been released, but I'm very glad because I started putting a PAA logo on there. And I like logos on the caps, but not on this one. I saw a picture and I didn't like it. So I'm really glad I got this. I think the color was slightly different too. So I'm stoked with that. I just heard someone talking outside. Not gonna kill me, are ya? They didn't reply, so maybe they are. <laughs> Next up, we have the Icon X3. This is on a Mueller handle. Fantastic slant. So I've got the 102 on the way. Well, not on the way just yet. The drop finishes in a few days. And then it will be shipped out to me. So I'll be able to compare it to the X3. The X3 is a lot more intense slant. I think the 102 seems very minimal, like the above the tie slants. They seem pretty minimal. Very nice and efficient, but very comfortable. I totally understand what Chris means. They're efficient, like very efficient, but they are really comfortable and they feel really nice on the face, especially that one. The next one, Gem Micromatic, the open comb. I had no idea this actually has a different ge geometry to the closed comb. I was wondering why this was so damn aggressive and that Chris was having great shaves with it because I didn't know that he liked really aggressive razors and I knew he had the closed comb I just thought this would be the same but apparently this is a lot more aggressive and you know I have no knowledge of gems so I just saw gem micromatic gold looked the, looked the nuts for me so I went and bought it fantastic razor feels great but it is just too damn aggressive for me be nice on a few days growth though. I love open combs for that, just on a, a few, uh, like a week's growth or something. Just play our way at it, it feels awesome. Next up is a Gillette flare tip that I got from Reyes Restores. This is one of my favorite razors in the den now. It works a treat, feels fantastic on the face. So, so mild feeling. But, you know, it's decently efficient, about the same as a 34C in my usage, but it feels a lot smoother. Next is my big bad boy, bad boy, <laughs> razor. This is the Above the Tie SE1. This is a, on a huge Weber handle. I'm pretty sure this is bigger than the Colossus handle. If not, I'm sure this weighs a lot more. This handle on its own weighs more than like a 99R and a 34C put together. This is a heavy razor. And you guys know above the tie, if you've ever held one of their heads, it's very heavy. Speaking of heads, 
No, not that. I have two sitting here that don't have handles. So what I've got here is the Above the Tie M2. So this is their mild open comb. Doesn't feel mild, but that's only because the combs on it are actually quite sharp. They're not very comfortable, but the shave from this is ridiculous. It is so nice, feels awesome. Next up of the heads is the Mueller R41. Once again, I don't use this too often. The combs are a lot smoother than that one, but this is stupidly efficient. It's mainly known as the most aggressive safety razor. It's the most, oh. Actually, no, I've got a few that are very similar. So that Gem Micromatic, pretty similar. And also, I have an Executive Shaving Claymore. That's very similar. Next up, a beautiful Wilkinson Sticky. I love this razor. This is probably my favorite vintage one that I've got. I absolutely am in love with this one. The shave is stupidly good. It looks stupidly nice. I would love to get this restored. Get it nickel plated or something like that. Just get it completely revamped and looking like a new razor again because it's it's definitely deserves to. It's a beautiful, beautiful shave. Next up, pretty much my first razor, Parker 99 r Decently mild, nice weight to it, long handle. I really enjoy the long handles. I mean, I like all of them. I like small handles, long handles. It doesn't bother me. Light handles, heavy handles. It doesn't matter. It's just about the balance of the razor for me. The balance and the comfort of the razor. Speaking of comfort, this is one of the most comfortable DEs for me. The Feather ASD2. Very, very high priced premium razor this. Very expensive. Japanese stainless steel, made in Japan. Fantastic, I absolutely love this razor. This was my first high-end boutique razor and I just went all out and bought that. <laughs> oh, not even halfway through, it's exhausting. So much kit and I love it. So we have the Gem 1912 next. My first ever introduction into the Gems. And it was an absolute killer shaver. Sort of jittery, but it's not too bad. I did make some alterations to it to sort of help it be a little bit smoother shave. And seems to have worked. Feels fantastic on the face now. The gem blades are starting to sort of fatigue on me. I'm, when I first got them, I'm like, this is amazing. This is so good. But now, like, they're pretty good. I like them, but... I'm still more of a single edge fan. Um, I love the Artist Clubs. I'm a complete convert to the Artist Club blades. They just feel spectacular for me. I still love my DEs, obviously. They're the ones that I've majority got. But my favorites being the Supply Injector, which comes with the thi uh, less wide injector blades, right next to the big SE blades of the above the tie SE1, the Razor Rock Hawk. What's the other one I have? Executive Shaving Claymore, which is just a ridiculous razor. I'll get that one now. This is the Executive Shaving Claymore. This is a... I'm saying ridiculously too much. This is an insanely aggressive feeling razor. Feels so damn aggressive. It's decently efficient. Oh, yeah, it's very efficient, but... It just feels so aggressive. To me, this feels more aggressive than an R41. I've had people say, oh no, not really, or really close, but for me, it feels more aggressive. This is crazy. If you are interested in this, if you like your really aggressive razors, let me know. I got this for a good price. I don't want to lose much from it because I only used it twice and they it's just too aggressive for me really nice but the and the build quality awesome the weight really good as well just too aggressive for me especially now with daily shaves i hang more towards the mild razors speaking of which got one of the best of the best right here 
the Gillette Tech. This is nice, short, English fat handle tech, I think they call it. This is made in England, this one, I think. Yeah, made in England. Gorgeous razor. Red Island Shaver, just use one. They are beautiful. Great buffing razors. They're really popular with uh, Matt Pasasic at Razor Emporium. Just a mild shave, but with enough buffing, it makes a great shave with barely any irritation. That's one of my top razors right there. Another one I would love to get restored. Next one here, One Blade Core. Probably the most controversial one that I've got. I've heard a lot of bad things about this one. And my one is nonetheless bad. It's had one of the stoppers dug into. I bought this from Consoldatos. When I bought it, it didn't have that issue. But as I kept using it, chipped away at the stopper, and now it's almost off. Almost. It's not completely off, but almost. I've emailed one, uh, one blade. They haven't even gotten back to me. I messaged them probably two weeks ago. Might have to try message them again because great customer service, guys. <laughs> Sent them an email regarding you know the broken stopper, if there was anything they could do. Because I wasn't even saying, give me a new razor, which I'm hoping they will. But, you know, I, was, I, was, I didn't even say what I want done. I was just asking what can be done to fix this and have not gotten a reply. So I'll probably hit them up again and I'll give you my upcoming thoughts. The shaves that I've had with that are actually very good. If I get another one I would love to do a review on it but I'm not going to do a review on something where the blade is not fit in evenly. I still use it to shave but I just don't want to review it and give it a very unfair review but this is a very common problem in the version 1 one blade cores so just be careful for that. If you are buying one and they don't know what version it is get them to take the blade out and take a picture of the back of the stops. So the back of the stops should have stainless steel on them instead of just plastic. Speaking of stainless steel, God, I'm just getting links to every next razor that I use. Above the tie R1 with an Atlas handle. I got this one for a Jiminy Bargain. A while, oh, ages ago, I said, I'm never buying another razor again. I saw this pop up on the forums for a stupid price, so I bought it. I'm not dedicated at all. I have zero control. I have a problem. <laughs> I really do. Anyway, it's a fantastic razor, that. Really good. So R being their regular, so for regular growth, M being for mild, and then H being for heavy growth. Their H1, I think, would be way over the top because that R1 is just borderline perfect for in terms of aggressiveness and smoothness. God, this is a nice one. I like it. For the price, it's stupidly, stupidly nice for how much it cost me. Speaking of cost, zero dollars for this. This is a Razor Rock Hawk, aluminium. Very kindly given to me by Chris at Another Cut Above, yet another one. Oh, he gave me a brush, he's given me a razor. He's given me so many damn things. He's awesome, awesome fella. Thank you so much, Chris. I love this razor. He did not get on with this one, but I really get on with this one. I love this razor. I would love to try the stainless steel. I can't remember if that one's more aggressive or not. I don't think it is. I'm pretty sure I'm thinking of the double open comb. The stainless steel evolution is stupidly more aggressive than, than the regular DOC. This razor is quite efficient, but very smooth, very smooth. Probably the second smoothest out of all my single edge shavers. So above the tie SE1 being my number one and that. It's really, really comfortable to use and being really light because it's aluminium, you've got to be really careful when you're tightening because they didn't make the screw stainless steel, which is a, a really big o overlook, in my opinion. Because my PAA Alpha Ecliptic, all this is super high quality aluminium, but it's got stainless steel screw, 
and thread. Same with even my PAA open comb slant, which I'll show you right now. This is an amazing little shaver, wicked little thing. If you see this on the PAA website, just pick one up, nice and cheap. Open comb slant. First one I used it, I thought it was really aggressive, but then I'd just keep shaving with it, and it just feels aggressive because there's a lot of blade exposure on it. But, in terms of the shave it gives you, very comfortable, beautiful shave, open combs I love, slants I love, put them together, whole bunch of love. So, really good razor, love that one. Next one. R89, I don't use this too often. So this is D89 clone or made by Mueller. Very, very well priced here for Australia. You can buy this off Men's Biz, I think it is, or Shaver Shop, Shaver Shop have them. Good price, good little razor, another great starter. That, the Merca 34C and the Parker 99 are my top three choices. Next up was my first vintage razor I ever got. Schick Kroner. It's in beautiful condition. Love this razor. This to me feels like a 34C but made back in the day. It's got that same sort of exposure, so not too much blade feel, decent efficiency, but it's not going to rip your face off. So heavy beard growth uh, people, just, just give it a try. Get, uh, put a feather in it, you'll be fine. Great little shave of that. Very nice. Next up, my two favourites in the den. The supply razors. This, I've got the V2 here and the V1. F beautiful shavers. These are my two favourites. Absolutely, no doubt about it. Nothing shaves better than those in terms of my regular shavers. They're so comfortable and I love using them. I couldn't give any higher praises for them. They're totally worth the money. Buy one if you can. <laughs> if you've got the money for one, buy one, because they are worth it. Andy, buy one, buddy. Just do it. Take the plunge. Next up, we have a gem G-Bar, given away by the G written on here. This is a push sort of one. Yeah, it's loaded at the moment. This is a great feeling razor. You can sort of hold it like that and it's sort of it shaves really well. This is the mildest of my gems and the most well constructed and the most rigid feeling of the lot. Like the blade is really tight in there, feels really, really good and clean to use. Very nice razor, very nice to use. That's another one that I got from Reyes Restores. Thank you so much, Daya. Another one that I got from someone for a really good price on this and this is another cut above's Timeless. Back in the day when he said he would never get rid of this, put it up for sale, I said how much, he said a price, I bought it. Really good shaver, in perfect nick, this is the 0.95 blade gap, the most aggressive it's not the most aggressive, but out of the two that they do, it's a 64 or a 65, and then there's the 95. That that feels really, really nice. The open comb scallop, gorgeous design on that one. And beautiful to shave with. I don't think I've done a video with that one, so I'll need to get around to that, because it's a stunning little razor. Next, Schick Injector, original. Really old really really old 1937 I think this is yep made in Canada Schick injector this is a great little razor I used the original blade in it used it I could not shave with it to save my life it wouldn't shave a thing got the new supply razors um, the uh, Schick styled blades worked a treat this razor is killer works super well Love using it. Speaking of love using it, and what you guys are going to hate me for, the cartridge. This is a Dollar Shave Club. This is their 4X, I think they call it, or four times or something. This is their four blade cartridge. 
it's a really smooth shave, guys. It works really well. Kills me to say that I, uh, that it works really well. Trust me. As a daily shaver, it's really, really good. I thought I would hate shaving with this, but I've been enjoying it. And I think I've been enjoying it because I hate it, if that makes sense. You know, I've been in wet shaving for two years, and it's all about hating on cartridges. So that's, that's it. It's no getting around it. Everyone hates cartridges. They're expensive. The blades aren't as sharp. They don't last as long. They look ugly. Arguably, I mean, this isn't too bad. But most of them look pretty damn ugly. And everyone else uses them. <laughs> so I think that makes most of us hate it. But the shaves that I'm getting from this are so good. When I use artisan soap, or just really good soap, like tobacco or something like that, it really works, guys. It's a fantastic little shaver. And I'll probably do a video on it down the road, but <laughs> what can I say? I like it. Next up, my only titanium razor. The Razor Rock Baby Smooth Titanium. Looks awesome. This is a weird one. It, it's a hard angle to find. I've, this has been the hardest razor to find in the angle of, in my opinion. It's very finicky. It's got a sp very specific angle to it. and But once you find the angle, very good shaver. Really, really nice. I find the titanium doesn't glide as easy as most, um, as most materials. I've got a plastic one with the PA open comb slant. That glides really well. I've got, you know, the old brass. That glides really well. I've got cheap chrome that glides really well stainless steel glides pretty well but this doesn't glide as, as great it doesn't make it a bad shaver whatsoever though guys still feels like a really expensive razor but for the price I would have expected more glide see that's what the Icon X3 is all about their material that they made is matte but it glides very very well I'm not sure whether it's just me just feeling it or if it's actually true, but that's just my experience. I've used it a few times. Finicky angle, but once you get the angle right, it is in like my top five razors. It's ridiculous. All right, they are all the DEs and SEs. Now on to the shavette. I've only got two, th oh, three shavettes. This one, I've got the Bluebeard's Revenge. This was the first one that I ever got. It's actually loaded. Don't know how old that blade is, probably like a month or two old. And this is very, very light. Just one one finger aside is, you know, plenty to hold it. Comfortable to hold, but I wanted something heavier. So I moved on to the Parker SRX. So this is the same design as the SR1, I think they call it. This isn't loaded. Does that make you cringe? Just, ah. <laughs> the SR1, but... It's a lot heavier. It's made out of stainless steel. It's called their heavyweight. That is a beautiful, beautiful shavette. But because of the very edgy design on the top, it's not very well rounded. I find it very hard to grip. It's, yeah, it's not as ergonomic as that Bluebeard's Revenge that's a lot more rounded around the sides. So just bear that in mind. It will take you a little while to get used to. And then my favorite out of all the shavettes, you guys would have seen this. The Kamasori. Stunning, stunning little thing. Love it. Love using it. I smile every time I pick it up. I smile every time I look at it. It's a great joy to use. Very ergonomic. You've got a great handle to wrap it around. It's got notches in the bottom to put your thumb under. Doesn't slip. Very nice and comfortable to use. That's all my shavers, guys. And next will be the soaps. I think that I'll probably do that another day, maybe next week or something or other when I've got some time off. I'll get around to using, uh, using, doing those soaps then. So thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you, if you haven't checked out my brush, uh, all, my, all my brushes, that's just in the previous video. Go check that one out. I've got the razors. Next up will be the soaps. That'll be a big one. There's, I think I've got like 60 plus soaps or something. 
So that will take a while to run through that one. Hope you guys enjoyed. Show me, uh, put in the comment section below what you'd like to see next. I'm not too sure. I'm thinking cartridge of, you know, there's a few others that I haven't used in there for a very long time. If you've got a favorite in there or something that you really want to see viewed, send me a, uh, send me a comment, okay, down below and let me know what you'd like to see. Take care, guys. Stay safe. Stay positive and keep smiling. Take care, everyone. See ya.